it is all about related with counting and uh, if you start with counting tell me which set of number came first i am not asking uh, that uh, personalized invention i am asking uh, if you try to observe in nature which set of numbers come first which which natural number by default natural num name is there so natural number by default people have started counting so they have started counting 1 2 3 4 5 6 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that then someone came up with that okay uh, whatever things they had collected uh, the lost then zero came into picture and many people may claim that zero came from this area that area something like that but remember that uh, after natural number zero came and zero including putting zero in natural number it become whole number and then integers if someone is uh, someone has already lost everything and need to run his family or something like that he need to borrow something from somewhere else the so negative borrowing means negative things is coming and then people come up with rationals fraction something like that like if you are willing to divide one thing between your children or someone then their fraction word is coming p by q form and then when you are plotting numbers there in number line what you observe if you plotting rational number in number line you will observe some gaps are there what are those gaps irrational numbers the gaps like uh, there is no uh, integers pair of integers which can be written uh, satisfy the equation that uh, root 2 equal to p by q it will not satisfy or you can simplify in better way aquiring by aquiring you can say that there is no integer which is satisfying uh, q square 2 times q, q square equal to p square something like that then uh, irrational came and how many type of irrational have you heard? How many type of irrational? Two type, transcendental and algebraic. Those are coming with uh, algebraic equa equations or polynomial equations. Simplest one is polynomial equation. Like here I am saying that p square minus 2 q square. It is a polynomial kind of thing now. So, there uh, root 2 is a, it is an algebraic irrational number and if I ask what is e, what is pi, what are those? Transcendental and there in model 2 we will have a Burton formula or Burton paradox or Burton approach to estimate value of probability Burton needle problem. There, that one is very famous question if you are going to appear for uh, master or PhD kind of things there in uh, it is a, something like that, buttons, real problem that it is one way or to estimate value of pi. So, all these are transcendental, there is no algebraic equation from which uh, you can come up with th these uh, e and pi kind of things, these are transcendental kind of things. Transcendental means not algebraic something. So, transcendental algebraic function you might have already studied, Trend grammatical function, uh, logarithmic function all those are falling in the category of transcendental something like that. So, the, so these are the source of uh, numbers. Then you have to come up with counting things. You have to count things. Counting you generally do with natural number or integer or whole number something like that. So, in natural number generally you do counting in non, uh, natural number. So, here we will talk about in the perspective natural number. So, very much in the finite discrete sample of space uh, we had seen the formula of computing probability measure of a sample or subset of sample space or you can call it an event is what it is coming in the form form of formula number of outcomes in the event divided by number of outcome in the sample space so that's why we are counting their numbers so numbers generally those would be natural numbers kind of things so th in uh, natural numbers we have to talk about counting principles so motivation for counting is that 
the computation of probability measure in finite and discrete. Remember the finite and discrete probability probabilistic modeling often involves counting of the outcome in various events. It is dealing with counting of the outcome. That is why we are going to discuss this uh, lecture. And we have already derived the formula that, that uh, uh, probability of an event in the uh, finite and discrete probabilistic modeling, what is it is equal to number of outcome in event A divided by number of outcome in sampler space omega that we had already seen the formula. And one thing that it is not always true in general case that also I had mentioned. Okay? So, when we have compute probability of an event with a finite discrete sample a space under uniform law of occurrence, so uh, we under the uniform law and finitely, uh, finitely discrete sample a space, each outcome is having already a non probability. Each outcome go back to under the uniform law, go back at the outcome level. So, each outcome is having a probability of occurrence. That probability of occurrence we call it probability of success. You can call it probability of success. And if you are observing that under, under the uniform law, uh, all the outcomes will have the same probability of success. Like if you are tossing a unbiased coin, probability of getting head equal to P, probability of getting tail equal to P, uh, sorry 1 minus P and P equal to 0 0.5, then it is 1 by 2, 1 by 2, both are equal. So, that is a uh, so, generally one thing we consider uh, success, another we will call it, uh, that one is the Bernoulli approach, Bernoulli trial. That uh, if you are having various outcome, you can uh, bifurcate those outcome in two category, failure and success. So, in every finite structure of sample space, you can con come up with Bernoulli uh, kind of approach, failure and success despite of containing several outcome in that sample space, you can, uh, you can always come, come up with Bernoulli approach, failure and success like that. Okay. So, if you are coming in that pattern, design which one is the probability of success as per your approach and count the probability of success. That will give probability of the event, probability of event. What are the success coming in the uh, event? What are the outcome coming in the event? So, that will lead to our like one approach like that. And just uh, I am here talking about the first rule and second rule, addition rule. So, what is addition rule? Suppose we perform an experiment with R option. We are having an experiment, single experiment and we are willing to perform that in R options. Anyone can say that what is another way we can say that, another approach. R options means R cases. Case wise you might have already see, seen that. If you are willing to prove something case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4 like that. So, options are cases, several cases you are trying to prove. So, if you uh, uh, like it is one kind of things, there are various uh, road reaching here this campus from your hostel. So, experiment is that you have to arrive in the campus from your hostel. Okay. You are getting up, you can take any route. That one is coming here. So, definitely you will come here. And your uh, any route will serve the purpose of arriving here. Any route will serve. So, these are options like that case, case wise kind of things. If you follow any one option, you will arrive in the destination. So, what rule here it will come simply? Addition rule will come. If you are having an experiment, you are performing that experiment in R options. You are having options. You can go for any one option. Okay. So, what would be number of ways, possible ways would be there to fulfill that experiment? Some of the those uh, some of some of those possible outcomes. Okay. Each option have, having uh, n k possible outcomes. So, what would be the desired number n1 plus n2 plus n3, n3 like n plus r, simple addition, addition rule is coming there. If you are completing an experiment in uh, r options and each option is having uh, various outcome, various way of outcome something like that, uh, then you are performing that in summation approach, that experiment you are performing in summation. Number of possible outcome in order to perform that experiment in r options is 
n1 plus n2 plus n3 simple addition rule is coming like one simple example actually i have taken it here okay here suppose you are in a restaurant and you are going to have either soup or salad but not both okay so there are how many options you are having either you will take soup or salad okay in a restaurant so what is your uh, uh, how many options you will have 2 plus 4 6 there are two options for uh, soups and four options for salad in the menu so you will uh, have in total uh, six not both so the job is taking uh, soup or salad so you will perform in six options six ways six choices are there how many choices now another rule is multiplication rule is it, it is very much related with sequence sequence of now it is not like that experiment is done in r options so here you are having r experiment such that kth experiment is having nk, nk possible outcome, okay. Kth experiment is having nk, uh, uh, NK possible outcomes. So that means uh, it is one kind of uh, branching kind of things, one kind of branching kind of things. So uh, it has been asked number of possible outcome for a sequence of, there is a sequence. Sequence again I am saying that sequence of, if you are uh, breaking one term of sequence your job will be not completed your job will be not completed there is a sequencing of experiment one experiment has been converted into sequencing of experiment if i am asking to uh, i think uh, in building construction site you might have observed that uh, that uh, those uh, those people working there labor uh, they are making chain chain kind of things and they are they are uh, passing bricks one by one and that uh, it, it will reach uh, there at the final position have you seen that kind of scenario or not so that one is a chain if some people are living from the chain they are breaking the chain is it possible to transport the brick from one place to another place not possible the sequencing so the presence of every term in the sequence it is mandatory there it is mandatory there so you should not break the sequence and that uh, chaining thing is coming so here you are uh, having this uh, experiment which is uh, actually a chain or sequence of our experiment sub experiment if you are carrying in uh, carrying in that uh, way you can come up with a tree diagram the first second first layer second layer third layer like what we had solved monte hall problem in monte in that uh, uh, layer diagram we, what we had seen. so here we observe uh, total possible outcome would be what through multiplication if you are come up with sequential approach then th so here question is that a coffee has three types dark roast light roast and decaf so you can order your coffee in a small or large cup first type of coffee Second experiment is size of cup, a small or la large. So in how many way you can order your coffee? How many way you can order your coffee? Two way. So end rule, simply end rule. The here if you are saying that sequence in sequence, how if you are take uh, you are taking two conjugative member of a sequence, how you write? I am asking a sequence. How you write? If you are taking a sequence, how you write? Like uh, taking a sequence, you are having members like this one, and we are write comma. And like, what is meaning of comma? What is meaning of comma? End. It is meaning of end. So we are saying that there is a one is coming first, then second is coming, and then third will come like that so end and by default comma is talking about end so sequencing you can't uh, leave uh, one thing and is always talking about occurrence of all occurrence joint occurrence of all joint occurrence of all when you are talking about so when you are applying multiplication rule and you have divided experiment into sub experiment in the sequential pattern so you have to apply multiplication rule there but if you are having experiment and you do uh, perform that experiment in uh, option wise or case wise then 
addition rule is coming there. Or addition rule. Are you getting meaning the difference between these two? So that is the addition and multiplication rule. And uh, just uh, another uh, thing that if I ask this question that tell me if you are having a set with n elements, how many subsets are there? Very easy. Can you prove this? Uh, can you establish this by using ever two law? Can you prove this? Based on that, in the high school, you might have already seen that just uh, once this one is coming, you are trying to prove in different way like that. But just go for uh, additional multiplication rule. So here proof is it is coming like that. So, so you are just giving the example of subsets, how it is coming. I am asking the how I count number of, uh, the count of uh, subsets is 2 to the power n. Why, why count? So that I am asking for. I am not asking what are the subsets there. Okay. Why count is 2 to the power n? So I am asking, my question is that. So uh, consider a set with n number of element. So definitely question is how many distinct subset it is having. So 2 to the power n answer. So how we will find it? So we are taking a set in simplest form. It is containing first n natural number 1 to n and B is any arbitrary subset of A. So what are the choices of B? So in experiment, so we have, uh, so n elements are there. So we, come up, we can come up with n number of experiment. That is uh, counting number of subset, we come up with n number of experiment. You are finding number of uh, sub, all possible subset come with n experiment because it is having n number of elements. So experiment one is talking that the first element is 1 because it is in sequence power, first element. So whether 1 is in B or not, that you can raise, that one is that, that one is a binary decision. No? If you are taking 1, that one is the first member of A, so you will look that whether 1 is in B or not. So that question is very genuine question. If you come in second experiment, you will say that whether 2 is in B or not. So how many options are there? Two options. In the first experiment, two, two choice. In second uh, uh, experiment, two options. Likewise, uh, in third experiment, whether three, three in B or not. So n3 equal to 2. Uh, likewise, whether n is in B or not. So again, two choice. So all these are happening in a very sequential manner. It is not like that you are leaving any one element. It is not like that. There is no such thing. So how many total? So by default, uh, the experiment uh, of selecting uh, subset, arbitrary subset from the given set A, uh, it has been decomposed into n number of experiment, sub experiment. So what is the count? Uh, n1 into n2 into like nn, like 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. How many times? n times. So 2 to the power n. So multiplication rule is coming here. Through multiplication rule, easily you can establish that. What is the count? Uh, 2 to the power n. So that is the proof that you come up with multiplication rule. Okay. Another principle that uh, everyone might have seen, uh, number of element in A intersects, A union B is equal to number of element in A plus number of element B plus minus number of element in A intersection B. This principle, why we call it, we call it a inclusion, the first word, the exclusion, second word. Why it is coming here? Inclusion. What is meaning of that? There are two kind of set A and B. So A and B will have some common element. So if you are counting number of element in A, then also some element of B will be there and you are again common element would be in A, then you are counting number of element B, then again common ele element will come. That means two times common element are coming. So we have included common element. So inclusion is coming there. So we need to exclude the common element one time because two times it came. So exclusion. So inclusion, exclusion. So this is the formula. Number of outcome in A union B equal to number of element A plus number of element B minus number of element in A intersection B. So inclusion exclusion. This formula may look uh, simpler, but it is solving very complicated problem. 
later we will see. One problem is that in probability also it is playing very important role. Matching problem, one student had asked to uh, see the solution, but I think uh, uh, I asked uh, uh, that a student to upload that uh, snapshot of that in classroom, he could not upload, I, I again I request to upload there, so that I can comment. So, question is that how many positive integers not bigger than 20 are divisible by 2 or 3? When or is coming by default union kind of things are there. Uh, so, how you will solve it? This, how you will find the count? So, here you can come up with, uh, here 2 and 3 are basic things. Uh, you can define one event, uh, one kind of event that A, it is talking about integers up to 20 and divisible by 2. Here we are talking about positive integers. We are not going to negative integers. Uh, okay. And B is integers up to 20 and divisible by 3. And A union B is integers up to 20 divisible by 2 or 3. And A intersection B and and is coming there divisible by 2 and 3 up to integer. Okay. So, what is the count of uh, A union B? Wrongly I have written intersection. What is the count? You can count all the possible inter final answer is 13. You can verify that. So, it is intersection is coming here. It would be intersection. Uh, sorry, union. It is very easy to find uh, number of uh, integer up to 20, positive integer up to 20 divisible by 2. How you will find? How, how many there are? It would be 20 by 2? 10. 10. And you have to take uh, the nearest integer because you are counting. So, nearest. Uh, how many integers uh, which are divisible by 3 up to 20? Uh, uh, 6. So, 20 by 3 is 6 point that. So, you have to, what is the nearest integer? 6. 6. So, and how many integers which are divisible by 2 or 3? That one is not directly computed. How many integers uh, uh, up to 20 which are divisible by 2 and 3? What is meaning of 2 and 3? 6. So, 2 and 3 means 6 together you are taking it. So, 20 by 6 is 3. So, 3 point. So, so you have take nearest integer. So, what would be uh, your uh, number of uh, integer divisible by 2 or 3? It would be uh, what 10 plus 6 minus 3. What is answer? 30. That answer. Now, then if you talk about uh, this counting principle, can we go for general kind of counting principle? So, if you do counting up elements in a given set, then two things you will come across. One is repetition or not repetition. Another word you can say that replacement or without replacement. Then another word is order, whether element are in order or unordered way. So, these two things are playing very important role in counting principle, repetition and order. So, this of general uh, terminology for counting problems that show up in probability to make sure that uh, that the language that we use is precise and clear. It must be precise and clear. You should know meaning of uh, things in a very compact, uh, uh, in a very compact way. Like uh, one word is coming sampling. Have you heard sampling? You are having uh, a population. That means population means everything under consideration, whatever. And if you are taking everything under consideration, consideration, then if the population is large, it is very difficult to proceed with the population. Population of people, population of uh, uh, incomes, populations of uh, resources, population of various things. Okay. Then what people do? Uh, they do generally proceed with uh, sample. Just take out few things from there and start studying that, studying the behavior of that resource something like that. So, sample you have to take out uh, something from the population that we call it sampling. So, there are various way of sampling, various way of sampling. So, either you can take 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 depends upon what are things. Okay. So, it is sampling from a set means choosing uh, some element or one element from the set, some choosing some element from the set. Okay, better you call it some will be designed later some element from the set and 
we will call it k later we will call it if there are n number of element we will call it k element some element we often draw a sample at random then you will ask how will uh, i am giving a question make a group here in this classroom in order to solve a problem a specific problem what would be your approach you will look uh, into those who are friend or nearest friend something like that so if you are putting such kind of approach biasness is coming there bias you are biased so what generally if you are willing to come up with a good result never go for bias paper random selection <coughs> select group in random wise so by default no information is given there random selection you perform that so uh, we often draw a sample at random from a given set in which uh, if you use the word at random means if you are planning to form a group every everyone is having equal chance to be included in that group equal chance uniform law at random means uniform law the starting law what we call it uniform law so everyone is having equal chance of being included in that sample so that sample we call it random sample if there is a sample and nothing mentioned there by default you can call it it is a random sample so when we say that sampling we are performing sample it is a random sampling that means everyone is having equal chance to be included in that sample equal chance okay like that condition is coming so uh, if you are having that kind of scenario then we will come up with uh, with or without replacement with and without replacement so we draw multiple samples from a set uh, so first one is we will count sampling with replacement so what is the replacement we are choosing it in formation of group and then we replace it again the population so other will uh, like uh, uh, if you are forming group here in this uh, uh, class lecture so what will happen so who will be common in every group who will be common in every group who will be replaced always who will be replaced who will be common in everyone try to answer it it is just observe and think it is what who will be common unable to listen speak loudly who will be common it is simple observation it is not like that i am asking very tough question observe things and try to answer from there that is the mathematics who will be common who will be common a teacher will be common by default teacher whether teacher will come uh, in a specific group then people will say that now he is doing biasing he is very biased to one group teacher will be common in every way uh, in every group in order to help you in order to understand the problem it is very if it is very difficult so teacher will be common in uh, almost every group what about other who will common next who will common next who these are simple answer uh, question i am what i am asking so observe next ta teaching assistant those who are in this course they will be common in every group after the, after that who will be common internet why you are bringing internet here <laughs> yeah. talk about here among we are member in this lecture internet is not a member of, that one is not a, a, a living thing okay so talk about it here so who will be common next what technical yeah those will not help in understanding course okay i'm uh, talking about uh, regarding this course uh, nice attempt uh, any other think any other word uh, students ha is it possible is it possible then it would be one group and uh, our different groups if it is common not a student class representative or some volunteers among you those who are very active and motivating kind of person they will come class class representative or volunteers or those kind of thing those word are fami you are are familiar with those word you all are familiar with uh, that's why i am asking that so you need to talk about replacement something like that so if you put each element back after each draw 
So like that teacher will be not, if he going to, teacher is going to help in one group, he'll be not completely part of that group. <coughs> he, will uh, he will solve that kind of thing theory in that group at the present and move to other group like that. So uh, that one is very much movable transit in transition phase, movable. So the teacher is playing, so uh, teacher can be repla replaced in every, uh, in uh, from one group to another group like that. So uh, always available for every group, always available, not uh, at the same time in different, different time. Time frame would be there the, in different, different time, not the, not at the same time the, the teacher will be in every group, not in different, different time frame. Okay. So that, uh, so we call this sampling with replacement. So, in this case, a single object can be possibly chosen multiple times. A teacher can come in multiple groups, multiple groups in different, different time frame, different in order to solve problem. problem pro, try to see from the pro, problem perspective, problem how problem does see. Okay. So, so for just it is an example. A, if you take a set A containing four elements, then we pick three element with replacement. Then uh, what is mean? What kind of uh, uh, pick or sample we will have, we can say that a, a3, a1, a3. a3 is repeating in nature, a3. So repetition is, so that with replacement means repetition is allowed. On the other hand, if repetition is not allowed, we call it sampling without replace, replacement or repetition. And example is like, it is very much uh, like uh, a1, 2, 3, uh, uh, so okay. Uh, without replacement, that means uh, the situation uh, that a3, A1 will come there, A3 again will not come. So that one is the without replacement, the, it is not coming. Now another, another situation is there, order, order uh, un, un, unordered. What is permutation? Order unordered. Permutation? It is order, order is an combination? Unordered. So unordered, that situation is, order means there is a proper order, there is a sequencing. There is a sequencing and unordered means set kind of approach. In set there is generally you are not putting order kind of things. Order is not uh, meaningful there. So, uh, so two things, uh, one is replacement without replacement, another one is order unord unordered. Okay, the sampling from a set having four possibilities. Four, so if you are using two things, uh, two concept in order to sample, so four combination would be there. What are those? ordered and replacement or that means order sampling with repla replacement. Second one is order sampling without replacement. Third one is unordered sampling without replacement. Uh, fourth one is unordered sampling with replacement. So how many of you have seen among these four combinations? In, uh, any, anyone know about KC Sina? Mathematics by KC Sina algebra something like that? Actually, such kind of problem you will see there in algebra if you are just following, uh, following that book. And uh, there are other book in, I had seen in cases in a lot, such kind of example. So tell me, uh, till now, I think all possibility you might have seen, all four possibility. So which one is uh, more difficult? Which combination is more difficult? One or two or three or four? Which one is more difficult? It is not like regular lecture. I am asking to recall that those things what you had covered there in your uh, plus two in high school. This, okay. So this will help to solve problems in probability, compute problem in finite sample space situation. So which one is? Fourth one you will find little bit difficulty. Other three will be much easier. Uh, let us go one by one. Order sampling with replacement. So consider a set with n element A having members uh, element 1 to n and we want to draw k sample or k sample that means a sample of size k. A sample is containing k element of the set A from the set such that ordering matters here a repetition is allowed. Like one set you are taking uh, here just a set A is containing uh, three element and you are making a sample of size 2, sample of size, someone is asking what is uh, sample, the next question would be that what is size of that sample, next your question would be that what is the size of sam sample, so we are taking a sample of size 2, so how many possible combinations are there, 
how many possible combinations or possibilities are there? Ordered sampling with replacement. Ordered and replacement. So it is one one. That means one repeats. One has been replaced back in the set in order for that one is ready for uh, sampling. Ready. So one 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 two one three two one two 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 three three one three two three three. So all these nine possibilities are there. So we are having a sample of size two from three elements. Sample of size two from three elements. Now I am asking question: How many sample of size one there? How many sample of size one? Three. In this set, how many sample of size three? One. The set itself. Okay. So you can form sample of various size. Size is matters here. So K is talking about size of the sample. How many person you are taking at a time? Size is very much essential to ask. So means there are k position in uh, in the chosen list. There are k position. Uh, someone, if you are saying the sample of size k, that means you come up with k positions. In those k position, you have to fill the numbers. So uh, in actually, uh, I told K C Sinha there such kind of examples you will find a lot like this. So it is talking about. Uh, Order sampling with replacement. That means you come up with sample is looking like this way. Uh, this box having uh, k partitions, k partitions, k number. This partition call it k uh, one. Sorry, this partition call it two, and this one is k k sub box. Tell me how many option this box first. If you are having n number of element in the set, how many option it is having? Huh? N to the power. How many option one is having? This box. You are having set with n element. N options. A replacement is already there. How many option two is box two is having? N. How many option box k is having? N option. So n into n into n. How many times? K times n to the power k. So if there is a uh, the counting principle, counting that you do, uh, where order matters and repetition is also allowed, n to the power k, number of samples should be of size k. So this is the count of number of sample of size k. Tell me how many uh, sample of size n would be there? How many sample of size n? n to the power n. So you are changing the size. K is Varying, varying. It depends upon you what k you want to proceed with. So, so it is what multiplication rule. A special, it is a special case of multiplication rule. But through multiplication, it, it is coming. So here the boxes are coming in sequence wise. It is coming. So if you are uh, making a sample of size uh, k, it is not like that. You will take k minus one element, or it is not like that. In example, you will take uh, k minus two something like that. You you have to take take exactly k. Element from the set k element. It that one is fixed. That one is fixed. You can't uh, take lesser or uh, greater. So like so here, it, uh, that k is fixed. So you have to go with multiplication rule, sequential approach. Again, it is coming like that. So if the uh, here again question is coming that a special case of multiplication rule where there are k experiment and each experiment has n possible outcomes. Okay. So you are getting it like this way. Okay. Leave. Second option is order sampling without replacement. What is name of that? Permutation. Order sampling without replacement. So you we want to draw a sample of size k. Okay, k is again talk about size, and from the set such that ordering here matters. Repetition is not allowed. And consider a set having three element one to three, and take a sample of size two. What are the possible things? One two one three two one two three three one three two. Here order matters. Replacement is not there. Okay, so there are six possibilities. So what? How it is coming here? In box wise, you are having a box. Uh, here there are two boxes. Uh, first box is having how many option? 
three option second box is having how many option two option why because one has been already utilized there in the first box so remaining out of uh, three we will have two the second box is having two option so here uh, this these boxes are in uh, sequence manner so by default product or multiplication rule will come in Two into three, total six option is there. Same thing I, I have explained here. So if you are having a sample of size k, that means you are having k positions. So those k position will be fill up like first position will be fill up by n wage, second position by n minus one, and k position will be fill up by n minus k plus one. So you are writing like this way. That means. Uh, in the factorial term you are writing like this way factorial n divided by factorial n minus k and this we call it permutation per permutation of n element taken k at a time taken k at a time that means we are having a sample of size k okay so this one is again a special case of you know, multiplication rule a special case so n1 is equal to 1 n n2 is equal to n minus 4 one like nk is equal to n minus k plus 1 possible outcomes okay so one question is coming there here uh, if k people are at a party what is the probability that at least two of them have the same birthday if k people are at a party what is the probability that at least two of them have the same probability suppose there are how many days 365 generally we are taking how many days three in a year so all days are equally likely to be the birthday of a, a specific person equally likely uniform law is coming there so what would be here uh, answer then you will raise a question what is k we don't know k so that's where there, there is a freebie k if suppose k is greater than n that means greater than 365 number of people are greater than 365 definitely what is the probability of getting that two, two people are having same birthday it is very much certain one so if k is greater than n then probability of a would be one if k is less than equal to n then problem will come here so if k is le less than so uh, it, this this question can be solved in a complement way that means uh, uh, what is the comp negation of uh, that at least two of them have the same birthday negation have you heard negation what is the what is the negation of at least what is the negation of at least uh, at least okay no one what is meaning of at least if saying that uh, a number is taking value at least 2 that means x is greater than equal to greater than equal to 2 and if you take negation of this one what is the negation of this it is less than 2 this is the negation so at least 2 at most at most 2 So complement, compute, com complement, and computation of probability of comp uh, complement is much easier here. It is just coming in the form of that. It is a, at least two. That means uh, uh, simply uh, like that. No one is having um, common birthday, separate, separate kind, individual. So it is one kind of sa sampling. Uh, uh, sam it is coming in order sampling without repetition. Repeat two birthday are not repeating. It not repeating, not repetition is coming. So that one is falling in the uh, category of permutation. So uh, NPK, NPK is coming. So that one is the count of a complement. That one is the count of a complement, and this will give solution of uh, what is uh, probability of a one minus probability of a complement. Okay, and uh, it is coming like this way. But here uh, this one is a paradoxical problem. It is. very very much uh, difficult to come up with a exact solution for different different uh, k you will get uh, 
different different kind of things solution some par paradoxical another approach will come up with like that so we will solve similar problem in matching uh, as a matching problem matching problem using uh, uh, inclusion exclusion problem similar kind of problem we will see so this here right now we are not able to get a concrete answer of this one this one is a paradox this this one is a paradox right now it is a paradox multiple answer you will come up with okay let us so uh, now uh, another situation is coming ordered sampling without replacement unordered sampling without replacement what is name of this one in short unordered there is no order also we there is no replacement so what is name of that combination so it is combination uh, it is very simple to talk about uh, if you are taking a set of uh, three numbers 1 2 3 how many possible uh, sample of size 2 without order without replacement it would be 1 2 1 3 2 3 3 3 possibilities are there so you are where you are saying sample of size 2 you come up with a box and order is not matter here this box is having come it is one kind of combination how many options this box is having how many options this box is having two the first box how many options is k size is two so that's where two boxes are coming it is having three options and how many options this box is having two option so this one is talking about permutation so you have to multiply these two and in order to kill the repetition sorry in order to uh, kill the order thing so this one is coming in order way in order to kill the order what we have to do you have to divide it by factorial of size those are repeating we, we, here repeat, repeated things are also counted so we have to normalize it normalized by the size factorial of size it is you have to divide it by 2 so then you will get uh, unordered sampling without replacement you have to divide it so answer is 3 so that uh, you will see it here so doing permutation is easier than combination in the formula why in the formula okay so here it is coming like that uh, so uh, there are k options and uh, there are n okay there are k options so option uh, n option for position 1 n minus n minus 1 option for position 2 that means box 2 n minus k plus 1 option for uh, position k and counting is here we will normalize it by factorial k we are normalizing it by factorial k it is this formula we are getting so this one was the permutation and the permutation is normalized by factorial k, the uh, factorial of size in order to get combination, in order to uh, uh, remove the uh, order things, remove the order things. Order here is, we are not taking into, like uh, 1, 2 and 2, 1 both are same. Order is not matter here. Which one is coming first? That one is not matter here. So 1, 2 and 2, 1 both are same. Uh, 1, 3 and 3, 1 both are same. So we have to norm normalize that. We have to uh, out effect out effect that so how will out effect by dividing the factorial of size we are saying so that's where it we get this formula and we call it n choose k and we denote it n c k so remember that first permutation is coming and once you are having idea of permutation then we come up with combination this we call it combination okay that's where c word is coming here so those formula you had already studied there why but you don't know the order of occurrence of those things which one is coming first and which one is coming later in the principal counting you should know that order okay so one example is how many distinct sequences can be can we make using three letters a three three uh, three letters a that means a is coming three times and five letters b five is coming uh, sorry b is coming five times letter b is coming five, five letter b is. that means uh, one example is coming like a, a a b b b b five time okay like this kind of thing so what what are the solution so you have to find three letters a five letter b then total how many positions are there eight, eight positions 
in the later 8 positions you observe. And uh, here how many options A is having? How many uh, A will come 3 times? If you are choosing A, so one another thing that if 2 things are there, binomial structure is coming there. So what is meaning of binomial? If there are 2 things, I am asking uh, to make a group of uh, what uh, those are having mass uh, uh, plus 2 in plus 2 having mass greater than 70 and less than 70. How you will make? Very easy to make the two group. So, what you will do? What you how you will make that group? You will say that uh, raise those are having mass above 70 percent they will raise and those who are not raising they will fall in second group they will fall in second group so that is the binomial thing two things so by default if you select one class other will be by default selected you don't have to select both in together okay you don't have so that is the binomial thing two class are coming in together two class so one select one by default other would be uh, other will fall in the second class so the binomial thing so if uh, is you are selecting a by, by, by default B will be selected. So, this formula you might have already seen. What it is coming from here? So, here in this formula if you say n choose k and this one is equal to n choose n minus k. n choose k that means n choose n minus that one is equal to n choose n minus 1 n minus k. So, if you k people are coming in one uh, class then n k n minus k people will come in another class if there are only two class. So, this one is binomial thing it is coming here n minus k. So, that that scenario. So, that is where same question is coming here it is if 3 time 3 age then if you are selecting 3 age by default 5 b will be selected. So, that is where this two formula are coming. I am not going to solve directly it. Now, this one is little bit complicated unordered sampling with replacement. Who is comfortable in this counting? Anyone? Unordered sampling with replacement. Anyone? It, it is very much related with partition of integer, something like that. The size, you have to partition this size. Size. So, consider a set with n element and we want to draw a sample of size k, k sample. You can call it always k sample or sample of size k uh, from this set such that ordering not matter and repetition is allowed. For example, it is coming like uh, you are taking a set having 3 element 1 to 3 and size you are defining uh, k equal to 2. So, there are how many possibilities? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, not 3, 6 possibilities are there. 1 1 1 2 1 3 2 2 2 3 3 3. Here uh, it is unordered, order does not matter, but repetition is allowed. Repetition is allowed. So, how you will solve this one? So, better approach is that here what is remember thing? Remember here what is important thing here? The size. It is coming here, size is very much important. So, you do partition of size. Have you heard that uh, the very first class I told that partition of integers? Positive, positive integers. So, it is very much related to how many possible partition of k you can form that will decide the possible counting here. How many, how many way you can do partition? So, it is all about partitioning uh, and you will say that uh, partitioning you define it from the given set the partitioning member will come from the given set uh, or it will be related with uh, given it will be related with given set. So, you here you are defining two things uh, uh, three things here uh, here because A is having three numbers three elements. So, you are defining three three, uh, three things one you are defining x 1 x 1 is talking about number of ones in the sample of size k uh, number of ones x 2 is number of twos and x 3 is number of threes you are x 1 x 2 x 3 three tuple you have defined here. And so, uh, you will call 1 1 it is a vector x 1 x 2 x 3 and how you will design it 2 0 0 why because 
x1 is counting number of ones that one is coming two times two times so two g and x2 is uh, two is not coming three is not coming so zero zero one two is x one one zero one three is one zero one and two two is zero two zero two three is uh, zero one one and three three is zero zero two so if you try to see all these three tuples three tuples means it is related with size of the given set size of the three tuple so if you sum these what you will get sum these tuples what will give it will give size of the sample x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to k it is k equal to 2 here and x size are what it is taking value from 0 1 2 means 0 to k 2 is what k so x size are taking so you can generalize this result like this way so question is that if you are doing a, a counting principle like a, a sampling from unordered approach with replacement then it is one kind of thing that you are finding k dish, uh, k distinct sample it is equivalent to find the solution of this equation this integral equation this integral equations all are integers here we call it integral equations uh, all are integers here x1 plus x2 plus x3 a partition equation also you can call it partition equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to xn equal to k when x i's are taking value from 0 1 2 up to k and tell me in how many way you can how many solution it is having it is not like that uh, uh, fundamental theorem of algebra that say that if you are taking a equation of uh, polynomial equation of degree n then it is having n roots that one is true only in case of complex numbers coefficient are complex if you are taking comp uh, coefficient uh, real it will have less than n root like x square plus 1 equal to 0 is having 0 root real root zero real root and x square minus 1 equal to 0 is having two real root so like if real coefficient you will get less than uh, n roots if you are taking complex coefficient you will get exactly n roots x square plus 1 is having root plus minus iota plus minus iota that one is exactly two roots there you will get but it is a linear equation it is not like that it is having uh, n root it is not one root linear because degree is 1 not like that why because here we are dealing in integers integers are not forming field of a scalars uh, the field concept you will come to see later so here integer integers are involved so it is having more than one root more than one root so what are the what we have to uh, more than one solution what are those solution n plus k minus 1 choose k why we are going for this kind of approach so the idea is coming like that replace here uh, here each solution can be replaced each xi can be replaced by k vertical lines here and uh, plus sign will take place here as it is so you have to form a, uh, all possible distinct sequences we have to form all possible distinct so uh, we have to take uh, uh, suppose x1 is taking value 0 then there will be 0 vertical line if x1 is taking value 1 then there would be 1 vertical line if x2 is taking depends upon how many value what value x2 is taking and uh, x3 xi is taking you have to come up with vertical lines so what would be total uh, uh, count of lines and sign what would be total count how many uh, xi how many value it is taking how many uh, how many plus are coming how many plus are there here n minus 1 plus sign and uh, if x1 is taking value k then you will put come up with k vertical lines if it is taking 0 then 0 vertical lines so actually if uh, you are taking uh, selection like that uh, n minus 1 plus k or n plus k minus 1 
of uh, n uh, uh, things are there and from there you are making a sample of size k. So, Poisson is coming, it is very much related with combination you can relate it with n plus k minus 1 choose k. Are you getting meaning of this or not? I am saying that you are having uh, k vertical lines plus n minus 1 plus sign. So, in total how many objects there? n plus k minus 1 object there. From there how many you are selecting at a time? k. k. So, n plus k minus 1 choose k. It is not uh, directly in term of combination, but here we are doing unordered sampling with replacement. That one is counting uh, uh, total possible outcome. That means so possible total possible sample of this equation. So that is the way. So you just uh, focus on this approach. How it is coming like that? Focus on this approach. And through the formula, you know that n choose k equal to n choose n minus k. Same formula you can push put it here. Same, same one is satisfied here and we got the second approach. Second approach. Okay. So, one example we will talk about. So, 10 passengers get an airport shuttle at the airport. The shuttle has a route that include 5 hotels. Each passenger get up the shuttle at his or her hotel. The driver records how many passengers leave the shuttle at each hotel. Dr driver may have some notebook, yeah, he is recording all those. So, tell me how many possible different exits are there, number of possible exits. So, you will solve it like that uh, here, what is k? k is the number of passengers, it is given to us, k is 10, it is given to us. How many hotels are there? 5 hotels that distinct things are 5 or distinct object are 5. So, you are uh, placing those 10 people in these 5, 5 things. So, what would be x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus up to x5 equal to 10. So, you do partition of 10 in 5, in 5 of things, in 5 things, 5 object, you are doing partitioning one kind of thing. Each x i is taking value from 0 to 10. So, it is it is remember that the partitioning of k in the group if you are forming a sample of size k and their order is not matter, but repetition is allowed there then you are actually doing this kind of counting principle. So, here what would be answer n plus k minus 1 choose k. So, that is the answer that means uh, 5 plus remember the you follow the order. Uh, it is not mandatory, but you follow the order here. 5 plus 10 minus uh, 1 choose 10 and answer would be 14 choose 10. That is the total number of uh, possible exist. That is the total number. Do you fi find this one easy or little bit difficult? Okay. Just do practice then you will come to know all this. Okay. So, here number of ways of drawing k object from a set with n element. Uh, in four different ways. We are drawing in, uh, that means making a sample of size k in four different ways. What are those k? The first approach is order sampling with replacement. What is the number of ways? Uh, what is the number of uh, samples of size k? It would be n to the power k. If ordered and replacement, both are true, then n to the power k. If ordered but no replacement, then it is permutation n, n p k. If, if it is unordered, and no replacement, uh, so without replacement, the combination n c k. If it is unordered with replacement, then it is n k n plus k minus one choose k. So I at the beginning I had told that this may look time to digest this one, understand this one. Don't remember this, understand this one. How it is coming? Remember that here when you are saying sample of size k, you do partition of k, k there. When you are saying unordered with replacement, you do partitioning, partitioning of the size of sample k. So, partitioning is very important. It is very important part of number theory and everywhere partition is coming. Now, the last problem we will discuss matching problem. So, it is I think uh, it uh, 
there are various way to solve this one this problem and in various uh, segment of this course this problem will come in different different same problem will come. So, uh, n guest arrive at a party each person is wearing a hat hat sorry uh, we collect all hats and then randomly distribute uh, redistribute that those hats giving each person one of the n hats randomly. Now, question is coming that what is the probability that at least one person receive his or her own head? What is the probability? Can you say that is it a easy problem? There are various ways to solve this problem. The simplest way to solve it principle of inclusion exclusion. So, you have to define few event kind of things here. Any question till now? Or any question till now? No, I have already said uh, previous year lectures. I think previously what I had taught, various time I have taught this uh, course. So I have already said you can follow those uh, similar concept you will see there as well. So uh, consider here it is all about defining uh, event. AI call it uh, the highest person receive his his her his or her or head. Okay. So then we are interested to compute the probability of what kind of probability? Probability that at least one person receive his or her own head. That means A1 that the first person receive his own head. A2 second person receive his own head. A n nth person receive his own head. So that means it is union of A1, A2 up to N. At least uh, one person receive this, that means it is talking about this event. This is the desired event. We are willing to compute probability of this desired event. So, if there are only two uh, people, then it would be probability of A1 union A2 and through inclusion exclusion principle you can write probability of A1 plus probability of A2 minus probability of A1 intersection A2. If three people are there, then additional term will come there. If four people will come uh, are there additional one additional term so like that. So, here these are the uh, generalization of uh, inclusion exclusion principle. So, here first one is talking about summation of probability of AIs. It is uh, single summation. In the second it is talking about first level exclusion. Ex exclusion. Okay. So, it is a double summation ij it is coming. Uh, so, probability of ai intersection with aj so, double summation it is coming as double summation then triple summation is coming and like this is the last term okay this is the last term so you have to go so it is it will take the form of binomial picture you will see it here so uh, under the terminology that you know that uh, uh, if someone is saying that a1 uh, and a2 in this question you will see that probability of occurrence of A1 is same to probability of occurrence of A2. Why? Why there is no, uh, uh, there are, in, uh, suppose these N hat are in the box. Or, uh, yeah. So, how many possibilities are there? N hats in the box, how many possibilities are there? n factorial n possibilities. Why? Here you are having n people call it 1, 2, 3. How many of you know that uh, permutation is a bijection map? Have you seen permutation in the form of map or function? Have you seen or not? Not. So, these are map. Suppose consider three peoples are there and if that means three hat would be there. How many um, possible uh, permutation would be there if three people? Three hats are uh, actually uh, three hats are there and you have to 
distributed among three people. So what would be the factorial three answer would be there. That means uh, six uh, uh, permutations are there, six permutations. So permutation is a map. It is a map. How it will, it, it is a map, it is a bijection map from a set containing 1 to 3 to a set containing 1 to 3. If I am giving so that map, you can we can design it like this way. One got, one got two. Okay, so this person is having how many option to get uh, a hat? How many option? Three options. Now, if you come to talk about two person two, now how many option person two is having? Two option. Two option. Then tell me how many option. Uh, the person 3 is having. So, how many total options? 6 options. So, that permutation you will call it, you can in function way, you can call it, uh, uh, you can give a name to this, uh, this uh, permutation. Uh, suppose 2 is taking 1 and 3 is taking 3. Okay. So, you can give name to this uh, uh, permutation. What is name of this one? You will say that 2 goes to, okay, 1 goes to 2 or 1 goes to 2 and uh, 3, 1, 2, you call it is like 1, 2, 3 goes to remaining thing is there like this way. You read it, uh, it is a one kind of manner. What is, it, it ha has been mapped like 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and which is, what is 3 is missing here? 3 goes to itself. So, this uh, permutation can be written as 1, 1, 2. That means 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1. What is image of uh, 1? 1 is mapped to 2 and 2 is mapped to 1. And then which is missing thing here? 3. 3 map to itself. So, that is the 3 map to itself. So, this one is one kind of permutation. Generally, in abstract algebra kind of course, you will see that. So, it is one kind of permutation. It is one per What is another choice? Like, it is a bijection. It is all a bijection, self map, bijection from set 1 to 3 to itself. Each permutation is a bijection. It is defining a bijection. It is picture of each permutation. So, how many permutations are there? Six permutations are there. If your three people are there, and each one is having had uh, six permutations are there, and each permutations equally likely. If it is equally likely, what is the occurrence of permutation of one per, um, one per permutation? What is the occurrence of one permutation? What is the occurrence of one per permutation? One by six. That means one by factorial n. A n people are there. Then one by factorial n people map to n hat, n hat. So, how many possible bijections are there? Factorial n bijections are there. Factorial n bijections. In mapping also you might have heard the counting. So, what is the probability of a1? It is 1 by factorial n. What is the probability of a2? It is defining another bijection. There a1 is talking about first person got the first hat, one map to one and others map to differently like that. So, here uh, you can call this one a, a 3 map to 3 that means 1 2 is defining a 3, a 3 you can call it. If 2 map to 2, a 2 like that. So, that kind of things. So, a 2 is having probability 1 by factorial n, a 1 is also having probability 1 by factorial n and a n is also having probability 1 by factorial n. So, each one is having uh, same probability through equally likely. So, each one is having probability 1 by factorial n. What about if two things are coming? a1 intersection a2. What is the probability? What is the probability of this one? This situation, again same situation is coming here. Uh, probability of a1 intersection a2 is equal to probability of a1 intersection a3 like that. It is coming like that. And likewise, these things you will see. So, co all counts are given here. Uh, so, if that situation is uh, through, right now this follows this rule, uh, probability of a1 equal to a2, then uh, this would be simplified to n time probability of a1 and this will be simplified to uh, n choose to 
probability of a1 intersection a2 and this will simplify to n choose 3 probability of a1 uh, intersection a2 intersection a3 like that okay it is coming now uh, next we have to compute probability of a1 probability of a1 is what m ho gaya okay that means don't want to study further so i, I should write up here 